Today I want to talk about a topic that I'm extremely passionate about and I've been feeling some type of way about this for a while but especially since inflation has gotten worse and it's really bad this year I really want to address this topic. So the thing is a lot of us make money like I'd probably say 99% of people who watch my channel make money but we're not all where we want to be financially. And that's okay because whenever you're not where you wanna be when it comes to anything, you just work towards it and you just get better and better until you get to where you wanna be. Then you set new goals from there and you keep improving. The problem is we continue to self-sabotage in the middle of all of this, in the middle of not being where you wanna be financially, in the middle of wanting more, wanting to establish yourself financially, taking two steps forward and one step back with each and every attempt you make to get to where you wanna be. I know exactly what that's like, that's where I've been, and I'm not where I wanna be financially, but that's because I continue to set goals for myself as things go on. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when you work against yourselves, i.e. having bad money habits, which is what this whole topic of this video is about, that's when things get a little interesting. Right here, we already have inflation. We already have prices going up like crazy. Butter, milk, eggs, stuff like that. Like the common household items, the staples in your kitchen are constantly going up. Gas prices are going up. The price of cars, pretty much anything you can think of is going up. So that's what's happening over here. But then over here, we're doing something to ourselves that is making this inflation over here a lot worse. This is called lifestyle creep and it's also known as lifestyle inflation. So in addition to the inflation that we already have, what we're doing is we're creating our very own inflation, which happens to be way more than this inflation over here. See, this is the inflation that we can't control, but over here we can control every bit of it. And that's what we're about to talk about in this video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And as this video goes, I just want you to ask yourself this question. When I look at my bank account, am I happy with what I see? Very simple question, but it's very powerful because when you really think about it and when you really take a look at the bank account, what you're really looking into is a mirror of yourself. Only you're not looking at a reflection of your face in this mirror. You're looking at a reflection of your mindset. You're looking at a reflection of your decisions, which is basically an accumulation of your standards that you have for yourself. So maybe you're not making the amount of money that you wanna make per year, but that has nothing to do with the decisions that you may be making on the other end. You may like the finer things in life. You may enjoy eating out. You may enjoy having a nice car, a nice place to live, a nice everything. We all wanna have nice things and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But sometimes those things which can be temporary impede our overall financial goals and just leave them dead in their tracks or drastically slows us down. A lot of us could be so much further along if we didn't do certain things earlier on in our lives. And as much as that sucks, that's just the reality, but the good news is we can improve from that. And if you haven't gone through that yet and you're on the younger side, then just keep watching this video because this advice in this video is gonna help you a lot. So the way you break bad money habits is taking a look into the mirror that is your bank account. When you're, when you're scrolling and you're looking at those numbers, minus 50, minus 20, minus 30, minus 20, minus 20, minus 20, minus 29, like all these things that you find yourself spending money on, like in the moment, when you spend that money, it seems like, oh, well, it's all good, I got it. Like it ain't nothing but a few dollars here and there, but it adds up really quickly. And if you don't track it, if you don't have a plan for how much you should be spending in those areas, you're gonna be down like several hundreds of dollars per month, which could have been used for something else, like your savings account, for example, or making that money work for you or spending it on something that's more meaningful for your life. When you're in the moment and you're like, you know what, I don't feel like driving, I'm gonna hit up Uber Eats and they charge a crazy, <laughs> look man, Uber Eats is something else. DoorDash is way cheaper. But anyway, I'm just saying, even DoorDash can get expensive after a while you just keep ordering and ordering and ordering. Amazon, you keep ordering and ordering. The price of convenience is becoming overwhelmingly expensive. And I get it, you work hard, you feel like you deserve it. That's how I felt. You should have seen how I was when I first started making money. I, I couldn't be told nothing. I made, look, I'm, <laughs> I was a victim of lifestyle creep, meaning I was my own worst enemy before I even started making money. I always felt like I had to have the latest, newest phone before I started making money. I was like, when I start making money, every time a new iPhone comes out, 
I'm getting the new one. And that may be a small example, but it's the truth. That's how I was thinking about it. And before I started making money, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not getting a single bedroom apartment. That's regular. I'm going to go ahead and get me a two bedroom, two and a half bathroom townhouse for myself. My single, no kid having, no wife having self. Does that make a lot of sense to you? More room than what I would ever need at that time? And uh, and to be honest, when I did start making money, it was kind of like a euphoric feeling like, oh, I got money now. And you know, you just make certain decisions based off of that euphoric feeling you have of knowing that, okay, I got my own money now. I got my own place. I got my own car. I don't have to rely on anybody for anything. So now I'm grown. I can do what I want to do with little to no repercussions. That's just what it felt like. Yeah, I could go grocery shopping. Yeah, I could cook at home, but I don't really feel like doing it because why would I do that when I could just go over here to Chick-fil-A, when I can go over here to Cookout, when I can go over here to Applebee's, when I can go over here to Chili's, Olive Garden. And then I started stepping my game up, you know, as the years went by and started going to, you know, the bougie types of restaurants. But, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Food is food. I, I just enjoy eating food. That's what my biggest financial advice has been. But then after a while, when things started getting shaky at work, I was like, Ooh, you know, I'm I'm just getting started out in my career early on and um this is not going well. It doesn't seem like anything is going in my favor. I don't even know if I'll have this job a month from now. Like that's how I was feeling. So it made me take another look at my finances. It made me look like, let me review and the way you do this, the way I cut my bad money habits, which I've never had anything catastrophic, right? But I've always been hard on myself with anything in life, whether it's like physical strength or if it's endurance or intelligence, money, how, how good I am at whatever it is. It could be sports. It could be video games. It could be running. It could be whatever you can think of. I feel like I have to be good at whatever because I always hold myself to a different type of standard and it's no different when it comes to money and like at first I didn't really know what standard to hold myself to until I was like man things are not going well at work let me check my bank account let me just I could be saving more I'm scrolling and like I was saying earlier minus 50 minus 20 minus 30 minus 100 minus this 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 just like like stuff that I'm not even really tracking like I'm supposed to like, there's nothing wrong with spending money on things that you have money for and that you've planned to come out of your bank account every month for that. But when you're just not looking because you just feel like, I just got it like that, that's when you run into trouble. That's where bad money habits accumulate because it's not like there's going to be a red flag on your phone. It's like, ding, 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 ding. You made a financial mistake. Hey, you got this a bad money habit right there. You don't need to keep buying those. Hey, you, you bought 10 of these this month. It's the sixth time you done went to the mall and bought new shoes. It's not like your phone is going to do that. You have to be the one that looks at yourself in the mirror and do that yourself. You have to be the one to say, oh, man, I done ate out 20 times this month. I ain't been in the grocery store once. You have to do that. And absolutely no one is going to do it for you. And that's what I had to learn myself. I had to learn like, OK, well, I can be worried about my job and feel like, woe is me. I can feel like life isn't fair when it comes to my job, but it's my fault if I lose this job and don't have the finances to back up my lifestyle until I find another job. It's my fault if I don't have the finances left to survive because I lost this job. That's my fault. That's how I had to look at it. I had to look at it like, yeah, like right now, technically, if I want to, after I get paid, I can buy what I want, do what I want and all that stuff. But what does any of that matter if it doesn't last? And what does any of that matter if I lose my job subsequently to that? And then all of a sudden I have nothing and I have to sell those things. What did it really matter? What meaning did it really have in my life besides the fact that I can just say, oh, well, yeah, I got a new car. Oh, yeah, I got a nice new TV in my living room. I have all these things that basically scream vanity from all directions to make someone think that I'm more successful than I actually am, I had to really think like, none of that really matters. I'm not a type of person who really cares about what other people think. That's not even who I am as a person. So what am I doing out here going and getting these things just, just because? Just because it feels good, just because it looks good. It felt good going to my townhouse every day. It felt good just going to the store being like, yeah, I got it, whatever. Throw money at whatever I wanted. It felt good to go to the mall, but what doesn't feel good is the idea that what if one day I can't do this anymore? What didn't feel good was I'm getting all these things and I wasn't super out of control, but like I said, I'm just hard on myself. So th this is just how I talk to myself. I was like, I'm getting all of these things, but how much money do I have to show for my hard work and my savings account? 
at the time I only had like a couple thousand dollars, which to me at that time to keep things going like I wanted to, it really wasn't that much. I did the math. It was simple. My, my rent is 870. My overall monthly expenses were more than 870. So that 2000 wasn't going to last more than a couple months. I was extremely new and green in my career. So it wasn't like I was a hot commodity yet. So I had to really assess myself and look at myself in the mirror and like, man, I need to shave off the expenses in some places. And I didn't just like completely cut myself off cold turkey or anything. What I did was I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be more dedicated towards my finances. I'm going to look up videos. I'm going to read books. I'm going to figure out something different than what I'm doing right now. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to track my expenses, even if that's I need to download some apps. Like I downloaded Mint, which was really working well for me when it just it took everything I was spending my money in and it categorized it and it showed me what I was spending most of my money on, which so happened to be food. And I look back now. I made a good amount of money then and the economy was a lot better then. And if I could go back, I would have spent significantly less on those things that I didn't need. I would have been a lot smarter about it. And that's what you do. You look at yourself in the mirror and you say, how can I fix my past mistakes? How can I fix the things that I would have done differently in the past and make those into what I'm doing right now? That's how you start to improve upon those bad money mistakes or those bad money habits. And, and something else I want to say is some of us just really don't think about money to the level that we should that, you know, we, we think about regular inflation. We complain about it all the freaking time. Like you can't go anywhere at any time without hearing somebody complaining about inflation. Inflation exists. We get it. We cannot. That is the one piece that I can't do anything about that you can't do anything about. But I just don't understand how in the same breath, if we know that, let's say this is just an example, because inflation is definitely more than this number that I'm about to give you. But let's just say, for example, we know for a fact that inflation is going to be 6% this year. And you went from $50,000 to $55,000 a year. That's a 10% raise, but inflation is 6%. So the expenses are automatically going up that 6%, but your, your wage was still ahead of it by 4%. So you really only have a 4% impact more of buying power to sustain your lifestyle and add more to it if you want to. But the problem is we don't just keep our expenses the same, i.e. keeping the same apartment, keeping the same car, keeping the same things that you already have, and then being smart with the rest of the money. For example, saving, investing, paying off debt. These are smart ways to pay yourself first. These are smart things to do with your money. But instead, we're just like, man, these gas prices are just ridiculous. I can't believe this mess. Man, I just can't believe groceries are just so ridiculous right now. Man, let me let me go out to that five-star restaurant real quick. You know, we, we deserve it. We had a hard week this week. You know, I'm going to take the family out. We're going to eat good. We're going to eat good tonight. Let me go out and buy that new gas guzzling Camaro because why not? Does that make sense? Like... What do you think that's going to do to that 4% you did have? We're complaining about inflation, but that car, that might be a 10% increase over what your other car was costing a month. So just to recap, you had a 10% raise, inflation went up 6%, but you still have that 4% buffer. Then you mess around and come over here and make a 10% expense decision that then adds on to this inflation, right? Boom, boom. So that's 16%. So now we're talking about Regular inflation was 6%. Now you done made a 10% more expensive decision than previous. And that's being generous. Now that's 16%. So it's like, so basically life is telling you, congratulations, you've created your very own inflation to add on top of the inflation that I've already given you that you're already complaining about. So you've blessed yourself with even more inflation. Now you're at 16% inflation, but your salary only went up 10%. Now you're at a negative 6%. That means you technically took a 6% step back financially, purely because of your own decision to buy a car. But you know, most of us don't stop at a car. Nah, we got to upgrade everything. We're not going to just upgrade our car. We're going to upgrade our phone. We're going to upgrade our gym. We're going to upgrade the amount of times a week we go out to eat. We're going to go out to a few more movies because it feels like we make more money, not even understanding how the inflation is affecting us. We're going to go out on more dates. We're going to wear better clothes, better shoes, more jewelry. We're going to buy better sound systems, better entertainment systems. That's what we're going to do. And some of it isn't our fault. I mean, that's what we're taught and told throughout our lives. I mean, just looking at what everyone else does in society when we're kids, it looks like that's what they do when they get a raise. They get a new house. Boom. They get a new car. Boom. 
They're going on more family vacations. They're getting more things from the mall. They're getting more things during Christmas. They're buying more food during Thanksgiving. They're blasting their new stereo system. And some of us growing up under certain cultures, like especially like hip hop culture, which that's an extremely popular genre of music that I think pretty much everyone listens to. But that's the type of stuff I'm talking about. Like you listen to people who are rapping who may or may not be making millions of dollars per year, or they might be making $50,000 a year. You really don't know, but they make their money. But then in their music, they talk about spending insane amounts of money, throwing money up, spending 50K on a vacation, buying a new car, getting paid in advance and spending all of it in one day and then feeling bad about yourself and then getting it right back and then spending it all over again. Like, like basically a lot of hip hop portrays a lot of irresponsible financial decisions. So what does that do? So what impact does that have on you when you grow up listening to it? And then what impact does that have on families and friends and entire schools and entire cities? Like what impact do you think that has? Next thing you know, your friends and family start emulating what they see on TV, what they see on Instagram, what they hear in music, thinking they're doing something. And they might really be making a fraction of what the person portraying this image is actually making. Not knowing this type of behavior is really hurting your finances. So you have to wake up. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. You have to look at what you've been doing. Are you happy with where you're at right now financially? And if you're not, you got to take a step back and you have to cut some things out. You don't got to take everything out. You don't got to live miserably or anything, but you need to make some adjustments. And you need to make a plan for yourself. And I made a lot of videos on this. You have to figure out how you're gonna budget. You have to figure out how to master your budget. You have to figure out how to get your life together financially. You have to figure out how to get out of debt. You have to figure out how you're gonna cut back on some expenses but not live in a miserable life. You have to seek this kind of information if you don't know what to do on your own. And that's perfectly fine. Like I didn't know what to do when I first got started, but I knew I had to do something. In the moment you start, it may not change overnight, but in a few years, you'll be where you want to be and where you need to be. And that's why I made my video that I called How to Be Financially Stable, because it's extremely important that before we do anything, we need to get our foundation right and we need to become financially stable. And financially stable is nothing but being a stable-minded person with your money and making stable decisions that work over the long term not just spending things loosely without looking even if you have money you need to be paying attention to where your money is going and why it's going there and is it really serving you because if not you're just throwing money away which means you're not even being a good steward of the money that you are getting which means if you had 50 million more than what you have right now you probably wouldn't be a good steward of that extra 50 million that you're making you got to be able to handle 50k before you can handle 500k that is all I wanted to say. Either way, I want you to control what you can control and that's what's gonna get you where you need to be financially over the long term. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.